Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer, and this is Outer Wilds, a game with an entire solar system for you to explore. But while playing the game, you're always at the whim of the time loop and the mechanics of the game. So in today's loop, we're going to take the entire thing to explore the Hourglass Twins and visit every location it has to offer, whether it's hidden away, buried beneath the sands, or just around that next corner of a winding cave, we will visit it and see what it has to offer. And as always, this video will contain spoilers for Outer Wilds. The Hourglass Twins are actually pretty special, a binary planetary system in which two planets orbit each other. They are the closest planets to the Sun, getting as close as 4.7 kilometers to it, and their shared orbit is zipping around the Sun at an orbital velocity of 259 meters per second. The big brother, Ember Twin, is mostly comprised of red rocky substance, and though its little sister, Ash Twin, is made out of the same substance, it seems to be a bit weaker there since it's been worn away over the years. This left mostly just a giant ball of sand spanning 187 meters pole to pole. But this sand isn't always on Ash Twin. Every now and again, the sand from Ash Twin will begin tidally making its way to Ember Twin. This, in essence, forms a giant pillar of sand falling from one planet to the other. After the sand stays on its twin planet for a while, it eventually returns to the planet it initially began on. But, while the sand is on Ember Twin, it reveals buildings on Ash Twin's surface that are usually concealed by the sand there. The creators of these buildings, the Nomai, must have built them while the sand was on Ember Twin. But contrary to what its normal, endless landscape of sand suggests, there is a lot to explore here. When Ash Twin is empty of sand, we can see the original body is made of the same red rock material as its twin, Ember Twin. Though, we see it has fared quite differently than its twin has, as it's mostly seemed to just be worn away to some unknown process. Each twin has a pair of massive solar panels connected by wires that go straight through the entire planet. Ash Twin's panels have platforms attached to them, which may have been used to work on the solar panels, or perhaps they were used as platforms for the rock as the Nomai excavated the core of the planet. The reason I think this is they're only really found on Ash Twin's panels. The gravity well here would make it easy for them to get the material closer to space for them to dispose of it. These solar panels are almost on a planetary scale. They're just huge, towering at 134 meters tall. And remember, the whole planet was like 187 meters tall, pole to pole. And almost just as impressively, a pathway encircles almost the entire equator of Ash Twin. Along this pathway lay many towers which we can visit. And each tower corresponds with one of the planets in the solar system and they allow teleportation between the tower and the corresponding planet. They also each have a distinct design, whether external or internal, that allows you to distinguish which tower leads to which planet. The first tower on this pathway is the Sun's Tower, and it's cool to watch this tower emerge from the sand as a universal symbol for Sun pokes through. As we enter the back door of the tower, we find a Nomai whiteboard. The way the Nomai would normally see it as we enter the door, the whiteboard would be to the front, and to the left would take us to a grav well that would take us up to the top floor. The door to the right would actually be an outlet for the grav well down from the top floor. But thousands of years of decay and natural wildlife has forced anyone who wants to get to the top floor of this tower to go through an array of cacti. The top floor is quite simple as well, with the door leading us out to the main walkway surrounding the planet. Cleverly, the towers along the pathway also align with the order in which the planets are in the solar system, so we know the next tower on the path is the tower for the planet that is right next to the sun, and that just happens to be the hourglass twins themselves. This is signified by two separate smaller towers on either side of the walkway. The towers each have a teleportation pad on the bottom, and both also have a small ramp leading up to the upper floor. Though the ramp on Ash Twin Tower has been broken by time, the upper floors of the towers are connected by a small bridge, but the Ash Twin's upper floor has mostly given away to the years as well. This is probably due to the rough battering of sand that it routinely received. Ember's Tower, on the other hand, still has an entire upper floor, 
but it just leads to a small storage area where Nomai would normally store scrolls or other small portable objects. Now I'm not sure if its shape is meant to be special, but the next tubular tower is for Timber Hearth. From the outside, it's just a bunch of separate spherical tubes connected to make one big building. But on the inside, the decoration makes it clear which planet this is meant to lead to. The tall, iconic trees, as well as several patches of dirt and foliage, shows us that leads, leads us to home. Timber's tower is a simple one. Just one floor, and there's not much to see here, but it does kind of feel like home. Again, the shape of the next tower doesn't seem too important, but it is pretty cool to look at. The inside, though, makes it obvious which planet this tower is meant to lead us to. A gravity crystal is a dead giveaway that this tower will take you to Brittle Hollow. The crystal, though, leads you to underneath the ground floor, where a ground floor turns you upside down. And on this floor, there's a Know My Whiteboard with text on it. But if you look up, you can see a mural of a black hole with the crust of Brittle Hollow around it. As we know, Brittle Hollow had an important role in making all of these towers, so it's pretty cool that they went out of their way to make Brittle's tower a bit special. Giant's Deep's tower is actually pretty interesting. It's the only tower that you can enter from underneath the walkway, and it's opened up at the bottom. From there, you can see a giant vertical grav well that leads you up to a plain room at walkway level. Neither of those is how you actually reach its warp pad though. To reach that, we have to follow a small ramp all the way up the side, but it actually wraps around from ground level all the way to the top of the tower, and it's sort of meant to resemble the cyclones that we find on Giant's Deep. But this just leads us to another simple room where the teleportation pad is. The real cool location on this planet isn't really on the planet at all, or rather, inside of it. If we actually use the Ash Twin Warp Tower, it takes us to a pretty cool location inside the Ash Twins called the Ash Twin Projects. This is where the solar panels from the poles connect to. The Ash Twin Projects sits within the hollowed out core of the planet, and within, we can find the ruins that the Nomai basically held as sacred. The hollowed out room consists of a rotating walkway that simulates gravity, but along the walkway, we can find some Nomai tech surrounded by huge statues of Nomai masks. We can also find a Nomai statue there as well. This place was the heart of the Nomai plan, and served as the hardware that sends information back in time. Or anything, for that matter. But, for its relatively simple purpose, the Nomai really did make it a location to behold. Which is why I saved it as the last location to visit on Ash Twin. Luckily, we are visiting a binary planetary system, and have an entire another planet to explore. Looking at Amber Twin from space, it's pretty interesting. Counter to the walkway that encircled Ash Twin, a canyon encircles this entire planet, having eroded away from thousands of years of sand carving away at the rock. Only a small grouping of solid rock at its core keeps the planet whole, and even this is mostly full of sand. But luckily, that rock is holding true, and we still have a stable planet to explore. Escape Pod 2 is a good place to start that, since it's literally beaming a starting point out into space. Here, we find the story of the Nomai's emergency arrival on the planet, but luckily for the Nomai, their escape pod broke right through the surface of the planet and into an extensive cave system below. The interior of Ember Twin is full of winding caves, and some are even gigantic, but we will stick to the surface for exploring for now. Interestingly, the solar panels don't sit directly on the poles on Ember Twin. Instead, they needed that space to construct a quantum moon locator on the south pole of the planet. It's a pretty simple device that tracks all of the planets in our solar system through their frequency, and it'll tell you which planet the quantum moon is currently orbiting. It's also an excellent place to just go planet watching. Which is why Chert copied them and set up their camp on the north pole of Ember Twin. They've set up their camp on what used to be an island in a very deep lake. At their camp, we find the usual Harthian things, their explorer tools such as their signal scope and little scout, but of course, our species only astronomer wouldn't be caught dead without their telescope set up scanning the cosmos. As I mentioned, Ember Twin has a vast cave system spread throughout the entire planet, so we won't visit all of the caves, but leaping down from church camp leads us to a specific set of interesting caves. After going through a maze and climbing an endless sandslide, we find the central quantum cave. 
It's basically like any of the other caves on Ember Twin, but this is where one of the Nomicolius went missing when originally discovering the Quantum Entanglement Principle. If we sit on the Quantum Shard here and turn off the lights, we can ride this shard to most of the other caves here on the planet. Though there isn't much to say about those, so let's just return to above the surface for a moment. The Gravity Cannon is the last big structure on the surface, and it's built right next to the hollowed out equator on the planet. The Nomai used this device to recall or launch the shuttles that they used as spaceships. They were able to achieve pretty impressive speeds with an array of gravity crystals. It was so important to their way of life, it was basically built right next to their city. We can find a door leading to the Sunless City right behind the controls for the cannon. The Sunless City really is a sight to behold. An entire city built underground inside of a vast cave system. The city holds many districts in many different locations within and entering from the gravity cannon entrance leaves us right next to the Eye Shrine District, mainly one building with many floors all dedicated to the worshipping of the Eye of the Universe. Now covered in ghost matter, this is where the Nomai would sit and think or talk about the Eye of the Universe. The top floor was for worshipping and deep contemplation on the Eye, a place where you can find past conversations of Nomai's discussion and debate about the Eye. A wondrous window is carved through the rock which is pretty cool to see from outside. And the next district down would be the Anglerfish Overlook District. The Nomai had found the skeleton of an anglerfish and constructed a room to look down at it. They also got access to the actual room it was in and began studying it as well. And they constructed an entire building above it just for this task. The district below that would be the Stepping Stone District. A series of pathways that would lead to a lot of actual homes in the city. We can find several homes that were likely carved right out of the rock, though the Nomai had houses all throughout the cavern, and they weren't just concentrated in the Stepping Stone District. My favorite detail of the city is the big light that shines down on an artificial underground garden of sorts. A set of stairs has been carved out of the rock and on either side of it are flowers or trees. This must have been a pretty popular area in a civilization that lives underground. The final district in this city is the High Energy Lab Trailhead, and this is a long pathway that leads to a building where the Nomai conducted high energy experiments, but an easier entrance to this high energy lab is found right next to one of the solar panels on the planet. But however you enter it, it's an interesting building to see. It's built directly under one of the solar panels, and half of one of the walls is in a window. Normally, the Nomai would use the power from these solar panels to power the Sunless City, but sometimes, they'd harness it to conduct experiments. The main thing this building was used to do was to add power to black holes, but I think it was constructed before they began that experiment, so it must have had other uses. Black holes naturally send things back in time, but with extra power added to them, its natural negative time interval grows. So the Nomai used the high energy lab to prove visually the negative time interval. And turning on the power, we can recreate this experiment for ourselves. If we shoot our probe through the black hole, we can see that it exits the white hole before it ever enters. But if the Nomai knew how much power this actually held, they may not have been playing with it so willingly. If we shoot our probe into the black hole and take out one of the warp cores immediately, the entire fabric of space and time gets destroyed. I guess it's kind of lucky for us that the Nomai never discovered this for themselves. Yet, not so lucky that we never found out. You can also do the same thing at the Ash Twin Projects, but just with yourself. But with that, we fully covered the binary planetary system called the Hourglass Twins. They really are a lovely, interesting pair of planets to visit, and I hope this video gave you the sense of actually doing that again. I figured I'd do a half Discovery Channel program and half sort of time capsule for these planets. A video in which anyone can come back to and visit their favorite location in the game for a while. If you liked the video, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. A lot of people who watch these videos don't subscribe and it would make a huge difference if they did. It really does help the channel. And a special thank you to the members here on the channel. Most of the people who are members now have been members since the beginning, and all of these guys deserve some recognition, and not only from me, but from everybody who's watching the videos, which is why I like to put up this little thank you at the end of each video. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. As always, this is a lore explorer, diving deep into the game so you don't have to.